Hello everyone again, welcome back to another stream. We are just starting up now. I love the way that the uh, the beginning of the Deltarune soundtrack is just on in the background. I'm just getting links for everybody, so you may hear this playing twice or more. We shall see. Okay, let's do this. Ooh, that moment I'm trying to select all the uh, the discords here. Okay. So hello and welcome. I don't know who's going to be showing up to this, if anybody. But we're going to be carving out more of Heartland again. We're up to the second floor. I may have to explain that a couple of times to people, but it's no big deal. So, let's get on with this. Hi, Big Shot Gaming. Nice to see you. I, uh, I don't know whether this turned up correctly in the undernet. I hope it did. But yeah, we, uh, we're slowly carving out stuff. I was doing this while I was in VR chat before, but obviously because I was focused a little bit more on chatting to people. I ended up doing a little bit more chatting than I, uh, I really should have. So, we're going to be trying to carve out most of Heartland. Which is actually really, really fun because I love getting all the detailing and stuff done. And then it's going to be interesting to see how it uh, turns out later on when I've applied all the textures. And by the way, thank you very much for the uh, the test before Big Shot Gaming. It's good to have you on board as Fuku Fire. Especially because that helps round out the cast a little bit more and makes the undernet, well, the undernet, the underground feel a little bit bigger. Which is what I've always talked about, is making more characters uh, appear to have everything be a little bit more natural. So I guess... September update that we're working on will also now include Fuku Fire, which will be good because I already have her character model ready to go, so it's just a case of animating to the uh, the voice line, so there will be a sample of Fuku Fire in September's update. Oop. So, I'm just trying to get these bits of Heartland just looking a little bit more natural. This is round near the, the bum uh, area with Metaton. So we're just dragging these little bits out, right? And then I'll show you exactly where this is going. Because I've had to do this with the rest and I actually have to do it with the, uh, the side bits here. But what we're actually working on is the second floor. Uh, the first floor is, is really busy at the moment. Hi, Amber. So the first floor is really busy. I still need to fill in the lab here. We borrowed some assets from uh, Sonic Generations previously. So now we have um, the struts holding everything up. Hey, John. And uh, luckily enough, the struts don't go through anything. So we're all good here. I need to do the sci-fi struts that go down into the, uh, the sh right hand shooting room. But apart from that, we are all good. So Hotland's progressing pretty nicely. And then the idea is the core is going to be somewhere over here. So fun times. Fun times indeed. Hello to everyone that's that's checking in at the moment. Oh. I, I would have been on VR in actual person instead of just like typing today. But the problem is... But I have had a headache for the past couple of days. I don't know whether it's pressure related or what, but I've been feeling a bit weird. And of course, health and safety for VR is like, yeah, don't go in if you've got a headache. So from snow place to fireplace, says Amber. Indeed. I don't know whether I've already said it, but hey, John, nice to see you again. So we got everything here. So what I need to do 
It's just mess around with these blocks here and then it's a case of carving in and making everything look like it's fallen away a little bit. And then the cool thing is, once I've done this, I'll put stalactites on the uh, the underside of it. So down below, you'll see all these stalactites and it'll look really cool. And then we'll have giant ones from the roof as well. I'm literally just dragging these in different directions and seeing what works and what doesn't. Oh. Oh, come on now. Yeah, this is a long process. Like, doing this all by hand is an incredibly long process. So, uh, fun times ahead. I'm going to have to do this on the... Well, not so much on the third floor, but I have to do it a little bit. And not one of these rocks is copied at the moment. Like, I've not just hit copy and paste. And, uh, and done it the easy way, as some people call it. Instead, I've literally just taken all this and it all by hand, so each rock face is unique. The outcome will be worth it in the end. Indeed. It's like I keep telling everybody, it's going to be really fun when... Um, when this is all, well, all the assets are done, because, like, basically, apart from, like, visually upgrading the, uh, the environments and everything, the only thing I really need is the voice stuff, so it's, uh, it's, it's exciting to, to get to that point and just be like, yeah, as soon as all the voice stuff is done, it will come together incredibly fast. I has tried VR and arcade, but lacking things like depth and realistic lighting, says Amber, and being taller than 5'4 makes my brain confused and sad. <laughs> oh. It's like... It's funny going into a VR chat and choosing a giant avatar, just primarily, because it's, it's strange, but you do get used to it after a while. Speaking of which, I was already thinking about this the other day, but John, I may need to uh, may need to jump on Bone Lab with you for a laugh and uh, and do the multiplayer zombie survival thing because there's a mod for that. And also, if you haven't seen Super Hot's on sale, like seven bucks, so I'm thinking of getting that soon as well. There's only so much you can do with squares to make them look unique here, but... I'm usually short avatars is big shot gaming. <laughs> I, I try a different, like, amount of avatars. Like, sometimes I'll be short, sometimes I'll be big. Like, the, the shortest avatar I have... John says, I don't have Bone Lab. I can always try and get you it, depending on the price. Um... The smallest avatar I have is literally Toby from Undernet, which I, I've then shrunk a little bit, which I think is like a meter or something, or maybe less. And the biggest one I've got is 50 meters, which is Metroplex from Transformers, which is always fun to uh, to use to scare people in the Undernet when they're doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. <laughs> or when they're trying to cause problems. Like the other day, somebody was trying to pick a fight with everybody and came in with like a machine gun and was just shooting the place up. It's just like, excuse me? Excuse me? No. So yeah, normally the big robot comes out when stuff like that happens. The tallest one I have is Spam to Neo, says Big Shot Gaming. Oh, nice. Oh, hey, Lucky. How you doing? Biggest is the big shot. Doing good. Nice, nice. The Hotland, man, it's taking forever to, to carve out everything because it's all unique, but the upper floors are uh, more made out of what looks like some sort of like sci-fi metal, so hopefully I can just kind of do that and away we go, you know. Um... It's going along pretty quickly. I was asking Boydley before um, for uh, tips on Muffet's bit because obviously Muffet's parlor or the where she is in game in Undertale looks a bit weird. 
Uh, it's literally just a floating room. So I was like, how the hell am I going to do this? So we've decided it's literally going to be like an outdoor cafe style thing that's literally just all made out of spider webs. That's going to be fun to do. Audio? What do you mean audio? Or have I said something wrong? Huh? NVM. Ah, oh, okay. Waterfall probably looks so good in 3D. I need to go back and potentially redo a waterfall. It's kind of what I've done is I've used um, I've used the sprite work stuff as the original like stuff to go through, so it looks familiar that way. But I uh, like with Hotland here, where I'm upgrading the visuals, I need to keep it consistent. So I might end up going through waterfall and upgrading it completely. But I have made it look cool. There are some bits in the trailer, actually. Oh, like it's got some really nice lights and all the uh, the sparkly gems that are in the ceiling and stuff. I made sure of that, so. Oh, it's going to be interesting seeing if I do give it a visual upgrade or not, because I don't think I'll need that much. It's more so just the textures. I give... I might ask Frisk for the uh, the textures from the uh, Undernet and see whether I can actually get those because I doubt it's really that bad to uh, to help with texture work instead of you know like just throwing over models. Again, I still need to ask Kara for the uh, the fish receptionist at least, but Kara's busy doing updates on Undernet, so that's that's something that they're working on. I feel like I might be a bit cheeky asking for models again, especially because Kara was like, I'm not so sure the last time I asked. But that was admittedly like a month ago, so I figured maybe get Hotland done and then that can be like a, a little thing to be like, look, Hotland's done and ready. I might also try and model the, uh, the Monster Hand receptionist, I think it is, from Hotland myself. Like, there are a couple of NPCs where I'm like, yeah, we could probably have more people come in and voice them if I had the models. So it's it's a case of just, I'll see if I can model them. If not, then it's no big deal, but I'll have to include, like, a line somewhere that explains where they've gone. Like, for instance, if we just turn around and be like, they're on a regulation break or something, you know, the, um, the one that Metaton gives everyone. Then that would kind of hand wave everything and uh, and explain things in a way that doesn't make it totally apparent that yeah we didn't have the models for this. They went to grill these. <laughs> Could pull off that. There are a couple of explanations that we can do for it, which is is good. But like I'm I'm crossing my fingers now that that as <coughs> excuse me I need to take a drink here. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers now um, that as the project continues and we, we show off more and obviously as we, we start expanding more that uh, it gives us more opportunities because honestly since about a month or two ago tops we've, we've been on one hell of a lucky streak apart from uh, like the fish receptionist that's the only time where we've not been on a lucky streak so I'm hoping that we can keep that up and, uh, and everything comes out just fine oh because admittedly car has been nice enough to put the 30 second trailer in the undernets on repeat which is really nice because you see that on uh, all of the monitors currently or all the the screens every so often so it's all good. I figure we're getting there. We just need a little bit more influence and a little bit more trust, which is is fine. It's understandable. Ember says it's coincidentally lunchtime, and most people, most of the side people, were out. Says Ember. Nope. John's just laughing here. Or at least put a laughing emoji and then deleted it again. Hey, what? Do, 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 do. So yeah, we uh we just be slowly 
randomly moving these verts around to make it look like rocks and then from underneath it's gonna look awesome. Hey Dave, I finally beat Batleus or yeah, Batleus on uh, on AC6. Nice. How did you beat him eventually? Hotlands, you can say they got trapped behind the laser because they reactivated. Oh yeah, that's actually a good idea. That's an overlooked thing if you just got trapped. It went on break and got trapped behind a laser. But yeah, definitely having Frisk mention something like that will help. It's the same with like Snowden. Because we don't have all of the characters for Snowden, so we don't have like Politics Burr and some other characters. Because they just haven't been made. It's just like, yeah, we'll just say they're in the house or whatever. And then have the, the ones that we do have that are recognizable being like either the foreground or the background. Because I figure that's a good enough explanation. Honestly, I just did a close combat build, says John. Oh, nice. I mean, the blade is really good in that game. Again, I, I still need to uh, get on it, but I'm giving my hands just a little bit longer. Meanwhile, everybody's done like 50 playthroughs of it already. It's no big deal. And it says, I mean, if it's influence is needed, Undertale fans must be starved by now. Start religion. <laughs> no, the thing is, it's like, I look at this from a creative standpoint, right? When it comes to trust and, and getting models and things because I've told people repeatedly when it comes to this project it's it's incredibly lucky to get all the help and assistance it does from everyone and honestly I, I feel really honored to, to get all this help because it's totally unexpected uh, the reason why is because I've been in other communities and other places before where people have just turned around and just flat out denied people the access to like assets and stuff um like for instance um one of the examples would be like the uh the halo community right a lot of people spent a lot of time doing maps and other things for halo back in the day but then people created a uh like a piece of software so you could not take other people's work from like maps or whatever uh so you that way it was kind of protected uh, but then people made exploits to get around that but the whole idea was that they didn't want to share certain things and if you didn't want to share your stuff with the community then it would be protected you know but with the Undertale community honestly I went in thinking you know what I, I need these assets if I want to create a full movie I'm gonna be nice and ask politely of course and if I don't get anywhere then I don't get anywhere and it's just going to be tough luck and I'll have to make like a mini video instead of something. But what I've noticed it and what slowly happened was that people were literally just like, yeah, that's, that's totally fine, man. I, I don't mind. Here's, here's what you need. There you go. You know, and even though I feel like sometimes I pester people a little bit too much, but I'm like, can I, can I have this asset? And then they'll give me it. And then I'll be like, just, just wondering, I, I need another version of this, like with Asgore, for instance. I needed a, a casual and a uh, an armored version of him. So I, I went to Floral Pikmin and was like, excuse me, can I can I please have Asgore in his like summer shirt? But can I also have him in his armor as well, please? And Floral was just like, yeah, here you go. You know, this, this is all good. So it, it took like a couple of messages, obviously, because of me asking individually at different times. But it was really nice and unexpected. And of course, I mentioned Floral so much in these videos behind the scenes if you go and watch the other ones. Because Floral's just been a really big help. It's like, I, I asked for Asgore and got Asgore. I asked for the Amalgamates and got the Amalgamates. I asked for Asriel's final form and got Asriel's final form as well. And I'm thinking to myself, this is just so lucky because these are some really hard to find assets and not many people have these available. So just having them is, is special on its own, you know. Um, and it's not as if I'm handing these out. The, the whole rule is that obviously I don't hand these out to anybody else. I don't use them in anything else. 
they are just for the movie and that's it. It's primarily because, you know, obviously some people in VR chat sell their avatars. So it's not going to be good if you're handing your avatar or your model over to somebody and then they just go and use it for something else. So, of course, all I've done is use it for Immersion Tail. Uh, or use them for Immersion Tail. And as a result, you know, that, that level of trust I didn't expect being in other communities. But the I've been told multiple times, and as Big Shot Gaming said here, a lot of people in the Undertale community seem to be really nice and get along well with each other and are more than happy to help out. Which, honestly, when you've been around so many different communities, it, it's unexpected to me. It really is. But it does help a lot because it means that something like this, where you think, okay, I'll do a massive movie, something like this is actually feasible or viable. You know, it's something that can be done because people are there and are willing to do that, you know, as long as they trust you. Um, like, I might be overthinking it with, with certain models, like, for instance, the, the fish receptionist and, and the royal guards, because they come from somebody who's helped me already at least get the, the project promoted in the Undernet Hub. But it's the whole thing of, ultimately, they are the final line in terms of the say of whether I, I do get to use the models or not, or whether I have to make up a silly excuse, you know, as to why they're not there, because those models are not available anywhere else. Um, so again, asking nicely, and then potentially making more progress on the project, and then asking again, I don't think is a problem, because... It just shows that, yeah, progress is being made. It's not as if I'm just, like, faffing around and using this all for clout. You know, it just... More progress is obviously going to back up what I'm saying. So, the more the merrier, you know. There's, there's obviously no problem with trust. It's mainly just... You know, you can't help but feel like sometimes there may be some doubt there in people where they're just like, yeah, you've done this, but you keep showing the same footage. Whereas, you know, what, what's going to happen here? Because I don't want to give away stuff if... Uh, you no, know, if it's not going to be used correctly or whatever. So I'm, I'm going to have to ask again. That's me just assuming, by the way. That's, I really should clarify that because I don't want to be putting words in Kara's mouth here when they've helped me out so much. But yeah, it's not... If it helps you do like a public access theatrical release and it's not for personal use, free advertisement, says Ember. A lot of people have said that actually in terms of like the avatar stuff. It's literally free advertisement. I feel like this is a way a lot of the Undertale community... To get a lot of the Undertale community back together because such a large part of the community is actually helping out with this, says Big Shot. Yeah, it's like... The funny thing is, I didn't actually expect it to be such a big project, and it sounds really stupid like that, but I, I guess I should clarify. At the beginning, this literally started out as just a small, like, fan project that I wanted to do where I just wanted to animate key boss fights. And then... I found that as I was animating characters, I liked animating their emotions and stuff. So then I animated more parts that were more just characters talking and showing their emotions. And by me just messing around and doing that, I was like, no, I'm committed to this now. I'm doing the full thing. You know? So it's, it's not how it's grown so much. And just how many people are actually helping out with this. Um... It's why I kept the, uh, or rather, why I give it the tagline, the same tagline as, like, Sonic Mania, because it was inspired by that, where I was, like, for the community, by the community. Because it really is a case of, I'm the only one that's really, like, animating. But in terms of, like, everybody else helping out with concepts and voice lines and stuff like that, literally everybody is in on this, almost. You know, so, it's, it's pretty nuts to think about it, and I... I I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I don't think the community has had this much input on a project before outside of maybe the cinematic dub although I could be wrong on that because obviously I'm not too familiar with Undertale content outside of uh, stuff that I've watched 
um, which admit, admittedly isn't as much as everybody else that's been in the fandom for a lot longer. But it's it's just not thinking about how there was something that I wanted to do that I really enjoyed that I started as a tiny one man project and next minute everybody's helping out because they really do want to see these characters and environments in 3D looking the best that they can with all the emotion and everything and the, the storyline still intact how they expect it to be. You know, so... It, it's not... And I uh, obviously can't let anyone down, so I've got to try my best. Emma says, It also helps that Undertale isn't like a competitive PvP franchise, so the community is a lot more chill, I hope. People have said to me that there are really bad parts of the community. I've been lucky enough not to experience that. Um... I don't know technically what people are on about when they say there are bad parts to the community. I've literally only met nice parts. But again, I, I could I could be jinxing myself there by saying that. I hope I'm not. Um, I honestly, like, there have been a couple of times where I've joined communities and the way that I've been treated at the beginning joining a community has been great, but then later on down the line I've been treated pretty badly. Um, but sometimes, you know, I'll go into a community and I'll be treated nicely, I'll be like, oh, this is great, this is the most amazing thing I've ever been in. Honestly, I... It's like, the Undertale community is by far the nicest community I think I've been in, because I can just... If I want to, I can go into the Undernet Hub and just chill out. And then I can come in and do my own thing here and, and try and progress the uh, the project. And everything's just chill at the moment, which is how I like things. I like everything to be super chill. Oh, because I don't want to be stressing out over everything. Big Shot says, I wouldn't look into it, honestly. It's just a bunch of drama. Oh, so it's like drama between creators and stuff? When I was on stream last time, I was uh, I was showing off some of the, uh, the other creators' videos that were really inspiring and also some, like, the audio, you know, that people have done. So good. I've seen a bit of a bunch of bad ones, simply saying I couldn't get into it. And my first was go genocide immediate vertebral combat. <laughs> like, in order. In order of communities that I've been in. I've been in the Sonic one. I've been in the Halo one. And I've been in the Armored Core one, so, you know, similarly adjacent kind of stuff that I'm interested in anyway. You know, so it's like cartoony characters, mech stuff, video games. But, um, yeah, none of them have been as welcoming and nice to me. A lot of death threats with some of the other communities, so, uh, death threats, job... Um, job threats, uh, DDoSing, and some other stuff, so I'm glad I don't get that. Emma says, I've been into Undertale since it first came out. I'm happy to see so many people work together on such a huge project. The funny thing is, I, it didn't set in at first how big I was turning this thing into, because I was just like, oh, I'm doing an animation, I'll... I'll improve it as I go, because there were bits where I was just learning better techniques for animation and stuff. I was like, oh, it, it's getting better, this is cool, I think I'll show it off. And then I was like, you know what, I'll make it into a proper film, let's let's try and look for some voice talent. And then I think that's when it really hit, when, uh, when I started getting help for that. And then that had a knock-on effect of helping get more assets and stuff, or it's just like... This is now massive. This isn't just a one-man thing now with some extra help for VAs. This is this is literally something that's absolutely massive, and I, I still don't think I have my head wrapped around it too well. 
I'm just like, um, okay. Maybe it'll dawn on me eventually after, um, after I've done more work on it, you know. Don't burn yourself out. It's, uh, it's actually a project where I'm happy to say I, I won't burn myself out, you know. Um, or at least I don't think so. And the reason why is because uh, this relates to other projects um, as well. So I think I should explain a little bit about that. Uh, with other projects that I've worked on, I've done a lot more of the modeling myself. So a lot more of what you're seeing on screen now, because a lot of this is mine. Uh, and when I do stuff like this, or when I've done stuff like this in the past, sure, I've, I've gone head first into stuff. I've worked over like Christmases, I've not taken holidays, I've missed family get togethers and stuff just because I go so hard at working sometimes. And it sounds sad. You know, it's like, dude, spend time with your family. They actually take Christmas off and stuff. But when I tell you that I've been passionate about other projects and they've not gone well, you know, well, it at least gives you an idea of the level of passion behind this stuff. The reason why I don't think I'll have any burnout with this is compared to the other projects, I've managed to kind of mitigate burnout or get rid of it because... The animating itself isn't stressful, and it's only going to get better come September. Because waiting in the wings, hopefully being delivered sooner rather than later, is full body tracking by Haritora X, which is all wireless, so then I can literally mocap full body. The idea is, at the moment, I can do upper body with head and arms using the quest that I've got, the quest 2. And the Haritora X wireless that's new uh, and is supposedly being shipped in September will allow me to do the lower portions of the animation. Which means that animating should be super easy. Like I won't have to mess around with legs too much anymore and everything should be just good for getting characters in certain poses and being able to get the timing right and stuff. Excuse me, I'm drinking here. <laughs> Whereas everything else at the moment has been done by hand. You know, all the animating in the trailers and stuff that you've seen before, uh, if you're familiar with the project, was done by hand. A lot of the other stuff will be a mixture of uh, mocap and cleanup, which is something that I'm waiting for the September update you know, that I'm working on at the moment to show off to people because mocap cleanup is super easy. Um, the way that I'm doing it, at least. So, it, it means that the animating will be a lot quicker, and thus I won't burn out there. And because I'm not having to model too much, the only time this project will fail, or have anything happen to it, uh, negatively, is if the voice cast doesn't obviously get the lines back to me. And I've re repeated this a lot over and over and over again. But I'm going to stress it again a little bit because of the, the September update. It's going to more or less show off all this stuff and how easy it is anyway. But when I tell you that confidently already I can slap characters in scenes and have them animated super easy within a matter of hours rather than years or months... It, that's how effective it is at the moment. It is absolutely insane. You know, so... Th the only way that this could go wrong now is if I don't have the lines. Because I have to time the lines to the character's movements and facial expressions. And obviously looking around and blinking and talking and everything else. As long as I have those lines, this project, no joke, is going to happen. And will be completed. Um, which is why I'm so confident and excited about it. Like 99.9% .9 of the time. Which I, I think throws a couple of people off. Because they're like, dude, you're too excited. And I'm just like, but, but it's going to happen. You know. <laughs> oh, damn it, John. Um, 
But yeah, sometimes I come across as, a, I think, a little bit too excited because it's one of those things where it's such a massive project, but it's so easy to get all of this done currently at the moment. I don't think it's been any easier on any of the other projects that I've had to do. Like, where I've been staying up and, and doing stuff previously on other projects through, like, Christmas or whatever. Uh, that's been when I've been having to model everything you know, by myself and then animate it and then rig it and everything and then texture. Whereas with all the stuff that I'm doing on this project, I'm using everything I've learned and just applying it and it's making everything so easy. Just checking on what's going on. Also, this is Inky. Hey Inky, nice to see you. By the way, thank you again for the uh, the burger pants model, man. I, that was so nice of you. Like, seriously, that that more or less made it so I could make Hotland feel a little bit more populated. So thank you very much for that. I have to keep thanking everybody because because it's absolutely insane. That burger pants model, for anyone who doesn't know, was completely uh, deleted from the internet for so long. And to suddenly just get really lucky with finding that is absolutely insane. And then I also got access to the, the Mad Mew Mew one from the same creator. Um, but that was from, I think, Uni Delta. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to double check on that. But I think, yeah, it was Uni that gave me that one. Yeah, I did actually put a manhunt on for Burger Pants' model. I was like, on my own Discord. I was like, if anybody can get me Burger Pants, I'll pay you. <laughs> you know, because I was that desperate. It was a limited time thing a long time ago. Indeed, I, I remember talking to you about it, and I remember doing all my research. Um, the uh, the actual model itself was used for MMD, and then it just got vanished because the creator noticed that they weren't getting credit. People were just taking the model and not giving credit for using it, or using it in other things, so they just vanished it. So when it comes to using it in Immersion Tale, I'm giving full credits to the, obviously the, uh, the creator and obviously to uh, Inky and Jitlag for keeping it archived because, damn, that was so hard to find. And Hotland would not be the same without Burger Pants. No. Mainly because he's such a uh, a main point of contact with the player in the uh, the resort. Because even if you don't have like everybody else, not having burger pants makes it look everything look really weird and out of place. Ooh. Ooh. And if anybody's wondering who's not familiar with these streams, um why I have the Delta Moon soundtrack on, it's mainly because I don't want to listen to the Undertale soundtrack too much. You know how um, in Undertale, Flowey tells you not to reset because it'll basically get rid of all the, the work that everybody's done and it'll get rid of the magic of the, uh, the run, <clears throat> as it were. It's more or less that. It's like I don't listen to the Undertale soundtrack too much because I, I, I love it that much. But when I do listen to it, normally I end up a sobbing mess by the end of it. It's like we were watching in VR chat the um, the cinematic dub again before, because the cinematic dub is the target to aim for in terms of uh, immersion tales, overall presentation and stuff. Like for anyone who doesn't know, the Undertale cinematic dub is absolutely fantastic by Plotline Plus, and. Uh, I, I keep trying to get as close as possible to it because it's so good. Oh, like it elicits all the emotion that you expect, like when watching it. It's just like, and you can't get any better than that. But I can try and get close. I can try and get as close as possible to, uh, to having the same effect on people. <clears throat> but as you can see here, when it comes to Hotland, 
Modeling all these individual rocks by hand takes a long time. Primarily because, like I said before at the beginning, each one of these is unique. So, none of them are copied, and each one of them has their own little details on. And then obviously I'm going to have to edit some bits here around the, the girders, or the struts, to, uh, to avoid it from looking out of place, or looking like I've uh, messed up a little bit. This is going to be so cool, lighting all of this from under underneath. Oops. But yeah, it's like, what, half two in the morning here in the UK? I'm busy, busy doing this. Can't wait to uh, get to level three and then add the core in. Because funny enough, the only reason I even started redoing Hotland to begin with is because I needed it for the core. Because the core's got to be looming in the background and I've got to join it on and then have the core looking good. So I was like, might as well just redo Hotland. So Hotland is accurate in uh, 3D as possible. John says it's 2am and the baby be snoring. She's had her morning feed, if I remember rightly, just before. She's really happy, so baby's happy, I'm happy. Having another drink here. I don't want any more headaches over the next couple of days because I actually do want to turn up the VR chat in person. I don't like having to be there in just like desktop mode anymore. It's like if I'm going to be somewhere. I want to be in the in person so I can talk to people. Oh, come on now. Let's try and just move some of this stuff in. Ooh. Right. Move it a little bit more. Let's see how this looks so far. Not actually too bad. Reminds me, John, because you were on about, uh... If you have any problems with Burger Panzer's tail, you don't need to use them if you don't want, says... Inky. That's fine. The, the tail should be fine, to be honest. It's like I love animating... Tiny stuff. Um... I think I've mentioned it in other streams before, I absolutely love animating really tiny details, although but for certain characters it's not so tiny. End of Asia! But yeah, I love animating stuff like, uh, there's two tails, Sazinki. I will have to have a look later on. So I, I remember something like that when we talked originally, but um, yeah, it's stuff like Tiny details, like for instance, uh, when Toriel turns around, having her ears flop around a lot, so they look like they have physics. I love animating stuff like that, because it's those little details that really bring the characters to life. So doing stuff like moving a character's tail is no problem. I've already done it on, I think, the lesser dog, when uh, they're just chilling out, so... Fun times. It'd be really fun times, just like getting to grips with each character and animating them and breathing life into them. Ooh. Somebody uh, recently asked me, like, dude, what are you going to do if Toby sees it? And I'm like, eh, if Toby sees this and he really likes it, I'm honestly going to be surprised. You know, because you wouldn't expect someone like Toby to turn around and be like, oh yeah, I like this. So that'll take me by total surprise if that happens. I, I honestly don't know what I would say if uh, I suddenly found out the, the creator of Undertale watched the entire full thing and really enjoyed it. 
But then again, that's always a distinct possibility that that could happen. You know. Oh. Absolutely love Deltarune Chapter 2 soundtrack. Can't wait for Chapter 3. Right, so, outside of a few areas, we have done the majority of this, I think. Hang on. I also remember having a very good Undyne model on my backup, so I think I still have it. I've got, um... Whose Undyne model have I got here? Just give me a sec. If I go to the credits... I can find out because I have everybody down in the credits. Like literally it's, it's probably about, oh, it's 11 pages of credits now instead of seven, or not seven, eight, sorry. Uh, there's the voice cast. Uh, let's just search up Undyne, Undyne. Okay, six mentions of Undyne in the credits. The armored version of Undyne was done by me. One armoured is by Elias Knight from DeviantArt, I think. He also did uh, Asriel. Uh, and then Undyne's House Interior is done by Matt Alex. And then Undyne's Date Model is done by... Kenneth. Okay. I have a lot of assets here. <laughs> I, get, I, I have like a massive asset library and it's a case of like whether I use all of them or not, but at least I have enough for every single instance of, or hopefully every single instance. That reminds me, did I respond to uh, Green Pebble? I think I did. I am. Let me check for you. Control your pick if I find it. If you have a picture of it, Inky, can you post it in the immersion tale section on the undernet for me, please? Because that way I can I can literally just find it super easy. Thank you very much. That'll be really helpful because then at least I know which one it is. So many assets. It's like I keep saying though, it's... I don't think anything like this could have been done in the early years of the Undertale fandom. And the reason why is because when I look at all the other similar attempts to do like animations, you'll find that they'll only be popular ones based off like a couple of models that were available at the time. So for instance, Sans, Papyrus and Frisk. Because, obviously, Sans and Papyrus are really popular characters and Frisk is the main character. So, you didn't really have, or at least the community looks like they didn't really have that many models back when everything first started. So it had me under the assumption that just like, yeah, nothing of the scale could have been done beforehand. Whereas, now, because there have been so many years and so many creators making different models and stuff. It, it means that a lot more characters are open to be animated. You know, so it, it makes sense now to do something like this with all those assets that are available or, you know, that can be obtained through just doing what the game says and be nice, you know. I forgot I was trying to read this, Suzuki. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's go in the undernet. Yeah, I'm already in the immersion tale section. Like, I don't know if anybody else in here agrees with me in terms of, like, the model thing, but it definitely looks like that from an outsider's perspective, at least, when I look at the, the community stuff that was done beforehand, especially if you look on, like, YouTube and stuff, you'll see just, like the important characters or some of the the more popular characters being animated and then that's it nothing else until like later on where everybody starts getting hold of different models for like either Asriel or Asgore you know or makes their own 
then that's when you really start seeing like things kick off a little bit more where everyone's like oh okay okay this model's available where do i get this from let me take a render of it says inky okay no problem no rush no rush i've got like all of heartland to do so <laughs> we're good here at the moment in terms of time Also, if Maze and Vamp happen to uh, to watch this coincidentally at this time, hello again. Nice seeing you both in the undernet. I already have like contingency plans for all this project going on at the moment, so that's gonna be fun. Like always good just to have backup plans just in case something goes wrong. So I was asking people about it the other day and be like, so anyway. I got some backup plans. Go through them with me and see what you think. And everyone's like, no, 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 it sounds like a good idea. So not going to be revealing what that is. But yeah, just to say that, you know, got some stuff in the works. At least it's there. Hopefully I won't need to resort to backup plans. But if I do, well then, at least we're not, like nobody's losing out on anything. So, and everything will be safe. Come on now. He says he then has problems messing around with the uh, the sculpt tool. <laughs> I'm sat here like, uh, I'm good, I'm good. If you need a voice for a sad catwalk worker, I may do it, says Inky. It, I mean, it depends on how confident you are, man. I'm, by all means, I'm, I'm good in terms of like, if anybody wants to try, they can do. Sad and stressed out cat worker. <laughs> I think in Kia, if I remember rightly, somebody actually mentioned you a while ago for, for burger pants. You know, it's a potential anyway, when I, I mentioned about having the burger pants model. It was when I was in the undernet in person, somebody turned around and went, oh, is Inky in that? I was like, wait a minute, uh, does Inky voice act? They're like, um, well, you know, he, he should do it because he really likes burger pants. It was like, oh. I didn't think of that. <laughs> like, I wish I'd... Have I still got that recording, actually, of somebody saying that? I think I'm... I might do, or I might not. Because I record a lot of my interactions in the internet anyway, just in case I get anything funny or get lucky, and then it obviously goes in an update. I've been asking a lot of people recently for the consent, so I can... Uh, I can put the likeness, or at least the... VR chat like this in the the most recent updates as well so I'm not just taking footage and be like hey look you're in the update and people be like wait a minute when did you film that you know I do voice act sometimes on voice chat if I'm bored oh fair enough then oh so close to getting the second floor done Do, 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 do. Oh. I just need to make sure that this rock formation definitely looks unique and has that like overhang. So you can see the uh, the geometry that's been defined really well. And then we're good. And then I can just decimate this entire uh, geometry later on. Because that's the, the little trick that I keep doing, is just decimating everything to lower the poly count. I'm just like, it, it's not pretty. It really isn't pretty. But as long as the model at the end of the day looks good for the, uh, the render, then we all good, you know. That's why everything down there is in tries. Because <laughs> decimate automatically puts everything in tries. Let's just 
pushing there, try and do this a little bit. Even that overhang that we got here a little bit. Yeah, I can't remember whether I mentioned it already, but I can't wait to do Muffet's section because I was on about it with Voidly. And uh, I came to the conclusion that I want Muffet's area instead of being like a, a dark cave looking thing. I'm going to have it as um, like an open uh, parlor style cafe thing going on that's made completely out of uh, web just to reference the, the cut content. Because I figured that'd make more sense on one of these upper platforms than literally trying to like smash a cave into what is essentially thinner that's nowhere near the um, the cave roof with the way that I've got it set up. As I was doing mine, Sam's voice and a lot of people I sound like Sam's comic. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me, I need to get in contact with a couple of the cast members, including uh, Rev Trosty, to find out how he's doing with the lines. I uh, I don't want to pester him too much. I, I, I've kind of just left him to do his own thing at the moment, because it's Rev, you know, he's, he's a nice, chill guy, and he's helped out loads. But I need to uh, I need to catch up with him and just be like, Rev, how's, how's things going? Because I know he has all the stuff, or at least I assume he has. All the stuff going on. God damn it, John. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so. You're doing good so far, says Inky. Thank you very much. We, uh, we're slowly getting there. I need to do inside of here. And I think we've got most of the back areas done now. It's kind of looking like rock faces. I just need to potentially lower them in certain areas so that they, they don't look like they're just... got geometry floating randomly. Here's one area I need to do. Just push this up randomly in different areas. I like floor two because it's it's all held up by support beams really, so it makes sense. Whereas floor three is a little bit less support beams and more floaty sci-fi stuff. So it's like, hmm. And then we get to the resort and then the core, of which the resort I have a feeling will be on like a giant rock plateau or on the side of the uh, on the side of like a giant cliff or something. That's kind of the idea at the moment. Because of the way that I've done this right now, because it follows more or less the, the exact um, map of Hotland. I've just made a little deviation, and by that I mean like the way that I've tried to do this to make it so that it will reach both elevators at both sides, like it does in game. Um, if you look and take the map just at face value, then it just does not work. So I had to extend the length of floor two in certain areas, and for uh, for this bit here, you can see it on the map. For, oh crap! For this bit here, I've had to drag it down and invert it so it's facing the opposite direction, and then it goes down. And what I've done is. This entire end section is just rotated 90 degrees and slapped on the end there so that it makes sense and it's still all of the features that are in this map. It's just there's no way if you try and get it looking exactly like that that you can do it without the way that the game does it which is basically separating everything into rooms. So if you look at the entire thing like this now, it, it's just off. Which had me looking like a, a conspiracy theorist for ages. Like That's the joke for, for the September update is I'm at certain points of the video footage, I'm going to look like a conspiracy theorist. 
because of uh, just how Heartland was laid out. It's uh, unique in its own way. To say it drove me crazy trying to uh, work out a solution for that is uh, a massive understatement as well. What's your favorite character? Ooh. Like, I want to go ahead and say Asriel, because at the end, like, literally, because the end. Um, because poor little go boy. Uh -oh. I like Asriel, but I also like Alphys as well. Oh, Alphys as well. Oh. Like, they're my two main faves. But there's a lot of personal stuff there. It's like, oh yeah. I can relate a lot. <laughs> Maybe not the killing everybody, but... Hell, John. In the internet recently, I've uh, I've taken to using the uh, player avatar from uh, under player. If I remember correctly, at least just let me double check. That. Yeah. The, uh, the player from, uh, Wonder Player. Created by you, uh, Yunan. I just, I use that avatar because it just allows me to go into the Undernet without having to do impressions of characters or anything. You know, I'm just like, oh, okay, it's just player, it's somebody that's hacked the game. <laughs> People always say that my favorite is burger pants, but no, my favorite is donut guy. Oh, outside of Muffet's place, where, where he's all like, uh, she uh, she made me buy this donut. I didn't even want it. He's staring at me in a creepy way. That poor donut guy, man. Like he he gets so much pressure put on him for for not buying the donuts, and then when he does buy it, he's still creeped out. And then it was one of Dork's videos that was on about Muffet basically um, wanting to just eat everybody anyway, and the genocide run. It's like, whoa, what? I'm planning to make a model of him very soon. I was gonna say there's there's hardly any models. It's like I've made a model of. Um, Onion San recently, that I think is kind of okay. Might show it off in a bit. Um, but I've done Onion San. And then I was thinking of doing some of the other MTT crew uh, from the uh, resort. So I'm thinking of doing the receptionist next, you know, the, the Monster Hand receptionist. Because I figured that would probably be really easy just to take like a, a hand model and then just give it like monster looking nails and stuff like that. But I don't know how easy that is going to actually be in, uh, in actual sort of working it out and getting it done. I'm going to have to potentially look into that. How about the slime guy with the mop? I know not many people have done him either, mainly because like when you think of modeling slime and stuff, it's actually pretty hard. You know, unless you're using like a modifier or something. The, the thing is, I'm trying to get the most iconic characters done just so, um, that, you know, from certain areas, just so it doesn't feel empty. Or a shader on Unity. True, because Unity shaders you can you can use and uh, and get something that looks good. That's the thing that I have with Blender at the moment is trying to do like either modifiers or something similar to to get everything looking good. It's like I've got the it's like a, a modifier in Blender that allows me to simulate like goop and stuff, but it's uh, it's pretty crazy.
because I used it on the Amalgamates. Specifically the, the dog one and then lemon bread, because lemon bread has like goop coming off its arms that, that make it look really cool. Let's just, oh, can I push that in there? Do, 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 do. My head's feeling better in a bit. I might actually go back into VR. Because uh, that'd be cool to uh, take a break from this eventually, but not just yet. The key gen, yeah, the uh, the key gen music in the background. Funny enough, the key gen music is actually really good, depending on uh, which one it is. Don't do it, says John. Wait, what? <laughs> like, my head's feeling pretty chill at the moment, but if I get any sort of, like, headache or something again, it's going to be an immediate no from me, you know? Definitely keeping a, uh, a close eye on my health to make sure I'm not doing anything stupid. I took a break from VR a week ago for making models, etc. This is a key. I, the thing is, it's like... I have massive periods of being out of VR, which is fine. It's just I do like being in VR when I'm conversing with people because it's, it's almost like I'm the, you know... It's like, I, I prefer being a little bit more respectful in person to people rather than just using typing to, to chat to them, you know. Especially when it comes to, obviously, my line of work, which is Immersion Tale at the moment. Like, it's always nice to be a, bit, a little bit more respectful to everybody and, uh, and polite. Ooh. Like somebody mentioned that recently, I think it was Maze that said, dude, I, I like how you, when you speak to everybody, you're nice and polite and respectful. I'm like, well, you know, everybody's respectful to me and polite, so why not? I don't know. Oh. Being polite to somebody never hurt anybody. Do, 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 do. Well, Element Johnny was like that back then. I'm not familiar with that user. Oh. Let's get these edges manipulated a little bit. Absolutely loving the uh, the sculpt tool for doing stuff like this. This might be me sounding really stupid here, but it's because I don't know some of the tracks off by heart. Isn't this Lost Girl from Chapter 2? Because then Toby released Find... Was it Find Her on the Spams and Sweepstakes? Or am I... Am I getting confused there and getting everything wrong? I think so, says Inky. Let's let's have a look. Let's cheat. We'll have a look. Yeah, it is. It's Lost Girl. Why is this section of Hotland not been manipulated? That's kind of weird. Like everything else is is going pretty well at the moment. But then we've only got a, a couple of portions to do after this, and then. Second floor will be done, which is a miracle. <laughs> I'll have to do like the the pipes separately, but I can't actually wait because if I keep this up, then come the uh, the September update, it means that we'll have a massive amount of stuff in the actual updates itself, other than just be doing a little bit of updating about animations and asking people about things because that's 
Another thing that I cover with uh, a lot of my interactions and updates is actually going and asking the community what they think they of certain things or what they would like. People would love this as a world when you finish. I can probably do that. My, my whole idea was releasing the stuff that I've modeled personally um, to public, obviously, because then there's no problems there. Because um, a lot of these other assets can be that I'm using can be got as like avatars and stuff already. But um, for worlds and stuff, provided I can lower the polygon counts, then yeah, that should be no problem. You know, I need to actually look into that because people have been asking for this already. The, it started with the judgment hall where people were like, dude, can we get the judgment hall? And I'm like, well, isn't there already a judgment hall? And people were like, yeah, but yours looked really good. And I'm like, yeah, but that's just Blender though. You know, that's just because Blender's making it look good because of all the, the materials and the lighting effects and everything, but like Hotland. I know the only other Hotland I can think of is by Frisk. Which admittedly I've spent an unhealthy amount of time in Frisk's Hotland trying to get my head around it in 3D. And it's so good. Remember Doggo? Um, just standard doggo on his own, not lesser doggo? The one with the pink top, right? Because that was another model that I was having a hard time looking for. There's one that was like really good that I saw ages ago. Um, and then the only one I've been able to find since is like a really low poly one that's pointy that looks a bit rough. You know, compared to all the other ones. Yeah, the pink tank top with knives. Yeah, doggo. I can't remember where I saw that really good model of him, actually. I saw it on Google, but it's so hard to get a, uh, a good model of him. Pretty much like burger pants, you have to put like a uh, call out and be like, hey, uh, anybody got this? <laughs> the dog that smokes uh, dog treats. Because I have dog and me and dog are because I made them out of Asriel's model. Like somebody else did on DeviantArt, and I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Two more characters. Okay, this is going good so far. It's actually kind of handy that most of Floor 2 is made out of rock like this, because I've already sculpted a ton of it. It's not too bad in terms of detail and stuff. And we can just like grab the other bits here, drag them out a little bit more to give that edge def uh, definition, and then just looks better. If you didn't bump into me, you'd still be trying to find burger pants, dude. When, I, no joke, you're totally right. I mentioned it in another uh, update a while ago, where I was like, seriously, this is absolutely nuts. I, I I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden I just went on a really lucky streak of finding everybody and just being like, so uh, can I get some help? And the next minute, yeah, yeah, you can have some help, here you go. And I, it's, to this day, it's, I still can't wrap my, hand, my head around it. it. It's just absolutely insane. So thank you very much, Inky. It's like... I was looking for that one for ages and then I started looking for like the Mad Mew Mew one when I was talking to some of the cast about it where I was like yeah we'll get Mew Mew in if we can you know and then I'm looking around for the Mew Mew models and I keep eyeing them up and I'm like I wonder if I can find anybody that's done one of them next minute I find Uni Delta's done one in um, in Snowden 
And it's literally the exact one I'm after. I was like, okay, I'll just hit Uni up in DMs. And Uni's like, yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> what? Yeah, you can have it. I'm like, oh, thank you very much. I was sick that day, says Inky. Oh, God, I'm sorry to hear that. Obviously, it goes without saying. I hope you're better now, of course, because that's been like a month ago since that happened. A month or two? Hard to believe that it's only roughly about a month when uh, when I put out that last update. It was like, check this out. This is how much stuff has been done. Favorite track from part two or chapter two? Sorry, the uh, the Megazord fight. I think it was May. Potentially, yeah. Because I remember putting up the, let's see, I think it was the, I may have got it wrong and it might be the the big content update video that I did. Hang on, Immersion Tale. So the big update was June the 23rd and I think that might have had it in. Hang on. Let's see, because June the 23rd is when we got in the Unnet. Yeah, it was. It was around June the 23rd, so about two months ago. So I'm literally watching the video now, and I can see Burger Pants in the video. I always hated the, the month of May. That's my sick month every year. Oh. Sorry to hear that, Inky. Honestly, I don't think I've ever really kept track of whenever I get ill. I just seem to get ill. <laughs> Lift up these birds. Doesn't matter where they go at the moment because it looks very rocky, so that's all good. Need to do the same here, kind of just do this. Oh, come on now. one's before the story? I can't remember. And then it's the credits. So close to getting all of this stuff, like, looking like rocks, and then I can just move on to number three, or, yeah, floor three. Which is gonna be so good. Didn't expect to actually get such a large portion of geometry done so fast, but it's come along quite nicely. Let's see here. I try and drag these across a little bit and give it a little bit of depth. There's a very good man, Mubi Vol, but it got re removed a long time ago, says Inky. I think if it's the s by the same user, uh, Yaru Narase, I think it is, the one that did um, Bundyne, Metaton, and Burger Pants, then I, that's the one that I got from Inky Delta, uh, sorry, from uh, Uni Delta. Because that's the. Uh, I think the best one that I think they've seen. Oh. Oh. 
I'll show it off in a, in a sec, hang on. Because we'll be having it here. <laughs> John. Because we'll be having it here, it should be easy to uh, to grab. I just need to make sure it's in the right file. Ooh. Be big, be big, be big shot. I think have the Undyne you're talking about. The Undyne one, I think, was a little bit easier to get hold of, but then there's the, the Metaton uh, and Metaton Neo one, which is probably just as hard as Burger Pants to get hold of. Right, let's try... let's try that, right? Now, just quickly, I'm going to see if I can find the uh, Mad Mimi one. I think I have it here, because there's my... Standard Metaton, there's Burger Pants, there's Mew Mew, hang on. Delete that for a moment. Delete that because that's an old updated video. I edited this Mew Mew a little bit so I can give her the uh, gold on the, the bells properly, but... But yeah, this is done by the same person that did Burger Pants. That's going to need to be smooth there, I think. Or at least edit it a little bit. It's either that or I uh, light it differently, because this lighting's not final. It was just to give me an idea of materials and stuff. It's going to be fun to do Mad Mew Mew's fight as well in this. Mainly because the whole thing of splitting the uh, the character in half. Do -do 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 -do. Don't pick up the phone, you don't know who's on the other end. <laughs> we don't want another repeat of Spanton's story. Hi Pink! How are you doing? Everybody coming in now and seeing how Hotland's going. <laughs> I've been on about this for a few days, being like, I'm working on Hotland, I'm working on Hotland, and people are like, how's that going? It's like, it's, it's going great. You also need to get the little duck out for um, Waterfall. Pick up the phone, it's Manuel. <laughs> he knows things. Oh. Oh. Well, let's just. Honestly, I, I've not had a uh, the feeling of a headache or pressure on my head for quite a while now, so I think I might be safe to go in VR. Yeah, I normally do not risk it if uh, if I have a headache or whatever because you're not meant to. Health and safety <laughs> first, you know. So it's the same with um, if I'm in VR and I get a headache, I immediately just drop. Like people will be like, dude, where'd you go? It's like, I, I just dropped. I'm sorry. Headache. Well, admittedly, I've not had many headaches until, like, recently, where I had, like, two in a row during Underfest, and was like, oh, I gotta drop. I'll probably get on if you're on. Oh, nice! Not tonight, Jen, I've got headaches as Jen. <laughs> Almost done the render, says Inky. Oh, nice, thank you very much. Honestly, I just... Part of the, you know, the fun of VR at the moment for me is not only using it as a tool to, to do mocap and everything on, but it's also just nice talking to everybody in the undernet, as long as the undernet isn't rowdy as hell. Like, I'll come in sometimes, they'll just be like World War III going on, and it's like, oh no, oh no. I do, I do like just kind of hanging out with everybody and just chilling. Do, do, do. 
Just posing right now, says Iggy. That's fine. Thank you very much. Let's try and... Do, 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 do. Okay, so we're practically done for inside here. I just need to pull those verts out a little bit. These verts need to be pulled out to give it a little bit of a distinct ledge here. But it's already got the right. Keeping with the uh Oh, it's the credits. I didn't used to like the credits for Chapter 2 compared to Chapter 1's credits. Because I, I like the, the non-remix version of Don't Forget, but this one's kind of grown on me after a while. Can I just like... Might have to manipulate this just a little bit more to make it look good on the inside there, but that's not too bad. We we'll just decimate the hell out of this in a bit. Best part is when a rock texture goes on this, it's going to look so much better than it does at the moment. Like a lot of the, the heavy lifting here will be done by textures, so... I'm not too worried about it. Oh no, wait, was, this was before the story, right? So what was the other one? Hang on. Let me check here. Yeah, this was before the story, so what was the other one? Oh, I must have got it wrong. The Dark Truth, it might have been. I've been meaning to get online, but college has been kicking my ass. It's fine. And everybody's doing college and, and school work at the moment, so that's fine, you know. I'm understanding, of course, it's just important stuff comes first. That's I've I've always treated when I've been doing group projects in the past, I've always treated everybody the same way when it comes to stuff like this. So it's like education comes first. So Education, family, medical stuff. That all comes before projects. Oh, so it's it's all chill. I'm gonna have to restart the um restart the OST here. Get copyright strike for it a third time. <laughs> I, every time I do a, um, a stream with Deltarune soundtrack on, I have to dispute it with YouTube afterwards because it always gets claimed and then I always end up being like... Ugh. It's annoying, but it's what it is, you know. Toby is watching. <laughs> It's not so much Toby that claims it though, that's the funny thing, because Toby's mentioned it on his uh, on his Twitter, because he's the one that says um, to dispute it. It's mainly the um, Materia Media Corporation or something, the, the people that are supposed to do the copyright stuff for uh, Undertale <laughs> and Deltarune. But they're so heavy-handed with it that like, you have to dispute it every single time, and even Toby's like, yeah, I'm getting sick of this. You know, so that's why he, he posted up to everybody on his Twitter and was like, D every time you use it, dispute it, because, like, it should be available to everybody. It's, it's pretty nuts when you think about that, how the creator has to come out and be like, no, 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 this is how I want it, so don't treat everybody poorly, please. Thank you very much. You know. 
Uh, come on now. Do 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 do. Oh. I want to play Delta Rudin Undertale music while I'm doing Undertale theme stuff on YouTube. It's like, no, nah. yeah, basically. The thing is, it's like, if it was any other game that had copyrighted it, and they, they clearly left like a message on the company site saying like, yeah, nah, we, we don't like people doing this. It'd be like, okay, okay, fair enough. Because like the only other songs that are normally safe to play on streams are Sega related stuff. It sounds crazy, but anything from like Sonic the Hedgehog that doesn't have lyrics in or something like that, you can get away with using and you won't have any trouble. But the moment you try and use somebody else's, that's just it. Like, you are screwed. You know. Which is so frustrating because the amount of disputes I have to make on YouTube recently because of all the... The Undertale and Deltarune stuff I've been putting up, you know, like, I don't know how these other YouTubers put up with it, you know, like, the the, uh, the bigger ones that do, like, more videos or whatever, like, Mystic Slime. It's like, dude, how the hell do you put up with this? Because all the time this is happening. Well, this is the ending of Sonic and the Black Knights, says Devasia. Like I said, it depends with Sega, like, if it's, if it's got lyrics in, then yeah, you're probably going to have issues. But if it's not got lyrics in, then you're pretty much set. There we go. I think most of this stuff has now been carved. A oh, no, wait. There's, there's a little bits there. And then there's those little floating blocks there. So let's do... Oh. Let's just make sure I've not screwed anything up there. Not lyrics. The ending in its entirety, says Devasia. Whoa. The heck? That's very strange. I wonder why they're oddly specific about that then. Right, let's just. Let's do this. Almost got floor two done. If I can work on floor three tomorrow, I'll be really happy. Because the idea is I can work on floor three, get the resort done the day after that. Texture everything. Have it set up for immersion tail in no time. And then, uh, and then it'll be fun. No joke, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying piecing this together and it's going to be interesting to see what scale is going to look like on this thing considering how big I've done it. Like for those who haven't been around for the, the previous streams, I've modelled all of the doors to Asgore because of Asgore being one of the biggest characters. So basically if Asgore can fit through a doorway, anybody can. But that also means that that door is then scaled to whatever scenery is around it. So everything starts looking pretty big. So Hotland is, is probably one of the biggest areas I think I've modeled in this entire project. And that includes me having to remodel Snowden, which was, uh, which was fun. Just seeing how big that ended up being. Devasia says, Not a clue, but I have a friend who could not post the last part of his Let's Play without heavy editing. I was going to say, I wanted to do a, a playthrough of a lot of the Sonic games eventually, so that's going to be interesting. Having to remember that for Black Knight and just be like, yeah. So anyway, the copyright is, uh, is screwed at the very end. It is funny watching the, uh, the fight between uh, 
Sonic and King Arthur on the horse, though, and when you press speed boost it, or speed brake, sorry, it speeds the horse up as well. So funny. Had me in stitches when I noticed that the first time. Horse is just running at like light speed and it's like, excuse me? Pink says, gotta love it when you have to create the equivalent of a small country entirely in 3D. It's, uh... It's fun either way, you know, I'm not gonna... Not gonna lie, it's it's exciting getting all this done for me. You know, because like getting all this done and seeing all of the, the environments in 3D is just really cool, especially with scale. Um I've left the lab alone for the time being primarily because it's gonna require its own little details and everything, so I really wanted to focus on those. But these rock formations aren't looking that bad right now and some of this I can kind of get away with just sort of leaving. It'll mainly be like the small blocks just doing little bits of work instead of loads but this isn't actually going bad at the moment here. Again, I think I mentioned it in the previous stream, but I absolutely love the, the video of uh, Chris beatboxing to uh, to Rudy. Well, Noel's in the background. To, uh, to Rude Buster, it's so funny. Rudy Holiday's in the hospital and is just like, Chris, what are you doing? Chris is just sat there beatboxing. And Rudy's like, you go, Chris. This is, I mean, Rudy's got to be like the most supportive and loving dad ever, I think. Like, even to, to uh, somebody else's kids, not his own. going good right now sadly there's no mo there's not a model of Rudy yeah it'd be so good to have one it's like I've said before there probably will be one eventually it's like I've already <laughs> I've already had people asking me am I gonna do a uh, a Delta Rune movie you know when uh, when all of that's done when like Toby's finished Delta Rune. It's like, are you gonna do a Delta Rune uh, movie like the uh, the Immersion Tale one? And I'm like, honestly, I I don't know. You know, if, if all the assets are there, then I'm I might not say no depending on what I'm doing at the time. You know, because like everybody everybody's priorities change and. Not so much what they like, but what they're doing changes, like, depending on what's important to them at the time being. So if I'm not doing anything super important, then I'm not going to rule it out. But at the same time, it's like, the assets aren't there, that's not happening, you know. Mostly, I see Pikmin that make the model of him. Then they make a model of him. Oh, you mean floral Pikmin? Yeah. I've not talked to floral in a while. I can't remember whether like what they were doing model-wise. I think they have other stuff going on right now, but of course, don't take that as official. You know, I've I've Honestly, not talk to Floral in a little bit, and I actually need to, to uh, just be friendly. You know, it's, I don't want to be that person that just comes across and goes, give me your models, and then doesn't talk to somebody again, you know. I'm 
because I feel like that'd be like the most nasty thing ever. It's like, oh yeah, you've, you've given me a load of trust. Give me models and then not talk to them ever again. What I'll do is, before the September update comes out, I'll uh, I'll check in with Floral and just be like, how's things going, Floral? It's either that or I ask them on uh, the undernet. Oh. Do 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 I'm still waiting for my best friend Jitlag to return. Still wondering about him, says Inky. He's... Well, they have done a load of stuff on DeviantArt, I think, recently. Because, like, last time I checked DeviantArt for Undertale models, Jitlag had uploaded a bunch of different ones for, I think, Toriel, Asriel, Frisk, and Kara? That looked really good, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's cool. But obviously, I remember the username. Oop. Okay, so that one's done. I need the rest of these two done, and then I think... Those are old! Oh, okay. Did not know that. <laughs> Almost done! Oh, we're still with floor two, outside of minor stuff. Do 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 Sorry if anybody hears me, like, basically, uh, humming the tune or singing the tunes to stuff. I just can't help it. That music, man, so good. Would have been funny if the internet had like a karaoke night. Oh my god, I wonder if I should propose that to Kara. <laughs> like, have we ever had a karaoke night? Can we can we go on up in here and and have points given out to, to people who do the best karaoke? You know, similar to the uh, Underfest. I think that'd be pretty interesting and see who actually goes in for that. You know. It has to be Undertale or Deltarune themed stuff. I I'd be totally down for just like sitting in Grillby's and listening to uh, that. Do do do. Especially because there were some people that got really interested in. Uh, in the most recent events and stuff that weren't actually part of the events. It's just like. Yeah, just, just invite people along and see what happens. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Let's just smash in the side of this rock formation here and see if we can Bring out these verts a little bit. Drag these in. Get that defining cliff ledge style lip on everything and then away we go. Ooh, come on now. Okay, that's not looking too bad so far, and then we just... Edit that a little, so it's... Kind of different angles. 
Then we can smooth that out later on. That moment where I've only just registered that my mouse is like clicky as heck here and they're like listening to every individual click and actually hearing it because the music's pretty low now. It's like, wait a minute, was my mouse ever that clicky? It's like, yes, yes it was. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. That one's been done. That one's been kind of done. It's just the last one. That's weird. Jitlag's Deviant uh, account is deact- Wait, what? Uh, Deviant art. Jitlag? Let's have a look. Let's try Jitlag Undertale. Uh, huh. I can't, yeah, you're right, I can't seem to find it, that's weird. That's really weird, because that was like some of the first things that, hang on. Jitlag, Undertale 3D. They were like the easiest things to find recently as well. And they were more stand out because of the quality of them. That is, uh, really weird. Because you don't just deactivate your account like that. Hmm. Hate to speculate, but something must have happened to cause them to delete their account. It's the only thing I can think of, you know. They're just like, nah, I'm out. <laughs> I'm gone, I'm out. If you've got them on, like, any sort of social media inky, it might be worth contacting them. That reminds me, I need to check stuff. Oh, there's... Just talking about my contingency plan in the background here to somebody. I have them on Discord, says Inky. Oh, okay, that's fair. Just as long as everything's all right, you know. Do, 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 do. Okay. And then we just try and drag in these center bits a little bit. Do 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 So outside of the the smaller ones here, we should be we should be good. So if I just take all of Hotland here and save it, right? And then we do uh, remesh for 40 for auto smooth, then we just hit face and go smooth. That's not actually looking too bad. That's not looking too bad at all. 
and then pop it off and decimate. Make sure we decimate about the same amount. Hey, we just knocked that down from 15,000 polys to 8. That's not too bad. And it keeps most of the smoothie intact. So, so far, statistic wise, like what? 200,000 polys? I think. Although, vert, it's got 156,000. So I guess now I'm on floor three then? Jeez. Which should be, uh, let's see. I get rid of that one and that one. Save that. There's floor three. <laughs> There's literally floor three, the same distance apart. That music scared me thinking about jet lags as Inky, I am so sorry about that, Inky. Did not mean for that. I just literally have it just playing in the background, just on, you know, on repeat the, the entire thing. But yeah, there we go. That's, that's floor three set up to do detailing tomorrow. And then it's just going to be a case of doing all the pipes and everything else and then putting the resort over here on like a giant rock and then the core. And then the Heartland is pretty much good to go. If we, we slap on the, the textured bits for a moment, we can see the uh, the girders that I borrowed from Sonic Heroes. Not Sonic Heroes, sorry, Sonic Generations. From Planet Wisp. And then I just retextured them. I spent actually quite a long time messing around with the textures and getting them look, looking uh, you know, pretty accurate, so... And then down here is Asgore and Frisk. Dude, this is gonna look nuts. Like, just having all of Heartland like this, and then you look at it from down below is... is gonna be pretty insane. Anyway, I shall end that there for the time being. I shall see you guys on the next stream, and I think I'll jump in VR for a little bit. So, thank you very much for accompanying me. I'll see you next time.